Welcome back to Fallout 4. <laughs> All right. Well, I know last episode I was talking about some stuff I wanted to do over in Far Harbor, but I'm back here in Sanctuary because, well, uh, wait a minute, what's in this mailbox? Huh, who's putting bottle caps in the mailbox? Anyway, In terms of in-character, Ripley has realized that she needs to come back to Sanctuary. Not to do anything specific here, but to check out something. Because there's this nagging feeling that there's something she's got to check out. And it's in here, in this root cellar. So let's get in here and find out what it is. Okay, let's see. Hey, looks like all the goodies have respawned since the last time I was in here. Yeah. Oh, come on. There we go. Sweet. Never turn down free goodies. Because, hey. All right, now, this is it right here. Don't open. All right, let's have a look at this. Found this loot topside. Strange house nearby, pocket watch, an empty journal, maybe the sickness, but when I hold them, I hear voices. Oh, boy, yeah. Scavenger stash. All right. Come on, it's a novice lock. It can't yes. be that difficult. Mysterious journal, old pocket watch, TARDIS key. Yeah. All right. Let's have a look at the mysterious journal. And yes, this is me adding a mod because... It's a particularly cool one. Oh, goody. Nothing on the journal. All right. Heading out. Okay. Let's see. What other stuff did I get here? The old pocket watch. I guess I can... Let's have a look at that. Oh, uh, yeah. I've seen that pocket watch before. Yeah. All right. Doesn't seem to uh, occupy any armor slots, so that's good. Mysterious journal has been updated. Of course, when that pocket watch activates, it restores a little something. And now... I remember who am I. I was a Time Lord exiled to this dead world for a crime I can't recall. Sanctuary Hills. Family, all real. Body needs to be restored. Prison capsule arrived in lies at a robotics graveyard in the north. Okay. A robotics graveyard in... Oh, God. Get off of that. Yeah. Robotics disposal ground. Let's head up there. Yes, I know what I'm going to find, but Ripley doesn't. Not yet. Oh, hey. Hub flowers. I'm always looking for those. Okay. I could have sworn I'd clean this place out. Excellent. Long time ago. This was one of the first places. Oh, I didn't want to go there. Oh, 
All right. But that right there, that's the thing. That's what I'm looking for. It's a TARDIS. Let's have a look inside. Okay. Mysterious Journal is updated. Okay. Second page. TARDIS capsule exiled in. Only good enough for a one-way trip. Might be able to get it up and running. Manual, library, and so on. Okay. Yeah. And, of course, as is the standard routine, it's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. All right, let's have a look around. It's a lot bigger. Gallifrey and Biology added. All right, update it again. Didn't regenerate. Still first body. Gone through a lot. Feel better now, yada, yada. Two hearts, 12 bodies, or regenerations, and so on. Yeah. And what do we got here? Sonic screwdriver. Oh, yeah. Journal updated. Sonic probe. Yeah. Scavenge some components to give the thing a bit of an upgrade. Well. Let's see. Wait a minute. Sonic screwdriver. Okay, it fits as a weapon. I'm going to put it on number four. Sure. Dismantle for components. Very good. So, it can scrap things for components in the field. That's good. It might actually reduce the weight problem. Now we have a stairway going down. Spiral staircases make me dizzy, and I've had enough of dizzy for a while. And what do we got here? Okay. And systems room. Live link to the Eye of Harmony. Need to do some wiring to the systems to the power stack. Yeah, okay. So what we've got here, environment, architectural reconfiguration, communications, navigation, security, and power stack would be that up there. And what I've learned about this, I have done some reading about this mod, if I go into workshop mode, wait a minute, hooks it up to the power stack, which produces 100 power. That one uses 10. This one needs 25. This one needs 5. Another 25. And finally 10 for the environment system. Okay. So, systems are hooked up to power now. Oh, I could have done without circular staircases. <laughs> but I'm going to appreciate it anyway. And we are updated again. And, okay, home for now. Manual is the key. You need to begin there, which means finding the library. And this hallway has changed. 
Now let's see. What can we find in here? This is pretty good size for something as small as it is on the outside. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I know there's a library. There's living quarters. Ugh. I have to be careful with this place. I will get dizzy in a heartbeat. Bad dizzy. Yeah, there are a bunch of rooms in here, and I'd like to actually find them so that I don't look like a goofball for saying that there are. It's like the layout is changing a little bit here and there. What's over this way? Ah, we have something here. Ah, living quarters. Shower, bed, another power stack, light switch, big looking bookcase. All right. Time to go upstairs, I guess. Whew. That turning in circles thing is just too much. Still not totally over my dizzy problem. I'm working on it. Feeling a lot better than I have been, but... Yeah. Mind you, that not over things is as of this recording, which is on the last day of March. Okay, this must be the library. A key to Fort Strong? All right, I'll take that. This is a library. The manual should be in here. Basically, the idea behind this mod is that this will become a functioning, usable TARDIS that will be able to travel around to various places in the Commonwealth and TARDIS manual. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot in there, so that's going to be an off-camera read. Okay. There is still more rooms to find. And every once in a while you see a little bit of uh, shaking quake-like activity that is apparently the, the configuration, the interior layout of rooms changing. I think there's something you can do to fix that so that it doesn't change. Oh boy. All right. I am going to take a break and look around and come back when I find the next room. Okay, a few minutes later looking around, I have found another room. We open this up. Journal is updated. Okay. No, no. All right, what do we got here? 
a mind archive. Okay. Hypercubes. The Master's TARDIS shell is now available. Okay. Now there's a different TARDIS shell that I would like to find. I guess you can guess which one it is. The Doctor's TARDIS shell now available. All right. Okay. I will continue looking around for a while. All righty. I've taken some time to read through the uh, TARDIS manual. And I've come to the conclusion there's something I need to do here. I need to come back here to this control panel. And I need to activate all of these subsystems. One of which, this one in particular, Relative Continuum Stabilizers. That stabilizes the interior of the TARDIS, its architecture, and so on. So that... Whoop, let's not turn the lights off. So that the systems will actually be up and running. So, and that means that I can now use this terminal. Architectural settings. Okay, I found the bedroom. I found the library. But the wardrobe is turned off. The engineering section is turned off. And the galley is turned off. So now they're all enabled. And while I'm at it, I can go into security settings. Remember those hypercubes I found? Plasmic shell configuration. This is what the thing looks like on the outside. And honestly, that's cool. That's probably really cool. But this is the one I want. Now I can back out of there. And... I go over here, where's the door control? Yeah, here it is. Open the door. Step outside. And... There should be a much more familiar configuration on the outside now. Hello, come on. There we go. There we go. Yeah, there we go. And by the look of this thing, I would say it's about... Uh, that kind of resembles uh, the police box as it looked when David Tennant was the doctor. Yeah. Okay, let's head inside. Okay. Now, let's see. There are a number of... There's quite a bit of stuff on here. Engine release, activate maintenance mode. That is for recharging the TARDIS, recharging its power supply. These holotapes, these allow bookmarking locations out in the world that can be used as travel destinations. Let's see, shield oscillator, that's the shields. Plasmic Shell Integrity, and Artron Energy, which currently is at 58%. So, yeah. And this right here, Emergency Power Booster, if I activate that, it will drain energy out of a fusion core to provide some power. And it's also a place to recharge the sonic screwdriver. And now... Goofy animation. There's one thing I can say about this. Oh, of course. Uh, you can't go third person looking at yourself when you're holding a weapon. And this thing is classed as a weapon. The one thing that bugs me about it, though, is you'll notice that... The sonic screwdriver is being held in two hands, a two-handed grip. This is wrong. The sonic screwdriver was always, almost always, a one-handed device. 
there were occasions when it might be held by more than one hand, but mostly it's a one-handed thing. Yeah, and that bugged me a little bit. But now that the stabilizer circuit has been turned on, the interior will no longer continue shifting, and it now has a consistently permanent layout. Now, because of this uh, workshop function in here, the TARDIS can, in a lot of ways, function like a settlement. I can build settlement-type stuff in here, machines, storage facilities, decorations, and whatnot. Yeah, that's cool. And, yeah, so... I'm going to head out of here for a moment. And I'm going to go back to Sanctuary and use one of those holotapes. Yeah. Alright. Let me duck out of here. I want to run over here real quick. What's in this box? Fusion core. Yeah. And, of course, that is worth... Attack, uh, being used on, and the reason I've got the hack option is because I have the sonic screwdriver equipped. If I switch to my 10 mil, that hack option goes away because the sonic screwdriver has, among its many functions, it can hack terminals and apparently robots, and also it is a great way to unlock or lock things. So, first, back to Sanctuary. Okay. All right, I'm gonna come over here. This is a good spot and while looking in this direction, I'm going to get out one of those holotapes. And what it's going to do is it's going to record primary holotape. Okay, good. What this is going to let me do is record the space-time coordinates. In other words, my position and the direction I'm facing on that holotape. Okay, now, back to the disposal ground. One of the circuits turned on is a, uh, a homing beacon that puts a TARDIS coordinate on the display. So that makes it a viable fast travel target. It also makes it possible for you to find it in the event that you misremember where it's been located. All right, now let's get back in here to the TARDIS and let's do a little TARDISy something. A TARDISy something? Good God, where did I learn to talk? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and close that. All right. Now, to use this thing. The door has to be closed for flight. And I need to do something with that holotape, not engine release. Magnetic card reader, yeah. Activate that, insert the primary holotape. Okay. And now, there's two ways to activate this thing. Using the zigzag plotter, whatever that may is, uh, will basically initiate a random flight. I'm not going to do that this time. The NAVCOM. Activating that means it's possible to go over here. NAVCOM data banks. And in this, these slots here is uh, where locations will show up that you've been to. Holotape data. Primary data store. Space-time coordinates have been set. I can back out of this. Back over here, and let's see if I remember exactly how to do this. I've already done the NAVCOM. I've done the part where I select the destination. 
And now the Helmick regulator needs to be activated. And then the space-time throttle, I'm going to set for maximum velocity. And then toggle the lockdown mechanism. And then activate the dematerialization circuit. And here, stabilizer activated. This means the shake, the thing won't do this crazy shake, rattle, and roll thing that may be lore friendly with Doctor Who because the doctor typically travels around a lot with the thing shaking like crazy and need to run around to the various controls and activate things to uh, prevent a problem. But the stabilizer basically puts the thing in autopilot mode. And you may recall the 12th Doctor, uh, Peter Capaldi, he didn't have a lot of this running around like a crazy person trying to keep the thing stable. He used the stabilizers. Yeah. Now it's just a matter of waiting. And I don't know how long it is. That's why I set maximum velocity. Let's see. Okay. System readout. All the different systems are at 100%. Architectural mass is at 25%. Okay, landing. And it's taken 2% damage. If I look here, all systems are down 2%. And that can be prepared. All right, now let's see. Open the door. Oh, yeah, let's see. Architectural configuration, fast return switch. Not sure what that one does. Uh, okay, here. Digital communicator. Basically, radio. And, of course, I've got the music turned off, so the only thing that would show up would be Diamond City Radio, if I, once I find the right frequency. And this one here, homing beacon. That's the thing that puts the mark on the uh, on the map so that you can find it. And now head outside, and I should be in Sanctuary where I made that bookmark. Hello. I hear stuff, but I don't see anything. Ah, here we are. Yeah. Now that I can appreciate. That's cool. And the really cool part about it is that it's got the workshop functions in there. So I can use that as a place to dump stuff while I'm out in various and sundry places and traveling and whatnot. So what I think I want to do now is this uh, the secondary holotape. I want to try setting that for some place in Far Harbor. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab all the loot out of here, go over to the drive-in, drop it off, and then head up to Far Harbor and see about setting a bookmark in Far Harbor for the TARDIS. All right, back here in Far Harbor just outside of the dock area. And I think I want to set, say, right about here as a TARDIS destination. I've already, by the way, I set the secondary holotape for the uh, drive-in. So I'm going to set the tertiary for here in Far Harbor because I don't know if the thing can go there. So coordinates stored. We'll be finding out because now it's back to Sanctuary and uh, get the TARDIS and see if I can bring it here. You see, the thing about the TARDIS is because it's got workshop functionality, having it nearby makes it a nice handy dandy place to dump loot without having to go all the way back to base to do it. It is basically not a mobile base so much as a movable base. Because movable doesn't necessarily mean mobile. 
you know, it's not like it doesn't have wheels and an engine. You can't just drive it around. But you can move it from one location to another. That's cool. Okay. So now, oops, I needed to go to Sanctuary for that. And now I'll take the TARDIS and see if I can get it to go to Far Harbor. I think so, but when the mod was created, I don't think Far Harbor was much of a thing yet. I may be wrong on that. It's very possible, likely even. But, yeah. All right. Into the TARDIS. All right. Now, let's see, where is it? My card reader... Eject the current holotape and insert tertiary because that one is going to be for Far Harbor. And flip the lock down. Not engine release. Navcom. Navcom setting. Holotape. Set that. Coordinates set. And now, this one, max velocity, lock down, door closed, and go. Oops, activate. I don't want to do that shake and shimmy thing. It's something that my uh, inner ears and eyes really don't appreciate right now. <laughs> so this may take a moment or two, but that's okay. I appreciate a stable TARDIS. I really do. It's one thing to watch David Tennant or Matt Smith run around like crazy chicken with the head cut off trying to keep the thing from blowing up. Uh, I really can't handle all that shaking and shimmering and double vision stuff that I've seen happen in, uh, well, some, uh, some videos that I looked up about the thing, you know. Okay, landing. Apparently coming down in Tar Harbor. Now, one of the things about Far Harbor is that there's a lot of radiation in Far Harbor. And, let's see, that might be a place to be possible to refuel. you notice it's down to 22%. Systems readout, we're good there. But, Artron Energy, that's fuel for the TARDIS. So... We're going to want to be able to reload fuel, and I don't think you can here. Let's actually let's find out. Uh, where is okay? Engine release requires higher levels of radiation for that to work. So not in this particular location, but someplace where there's a lot of radiation would be a good place to park the TARDIS for the purpose of refueling. Although, push come to shove, I can use uh, fusion cores. Might be a little expensive, though. But then again, I have a lot of fusion cores. Okay, there we go. A police box in Far Harbor. <laughs> I like it. Beautiful. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is pretty much call it for this episode, and then this one, Best Left Forgotten. It's time to go visit the Children of Atom, and... Uh, see about Dima's memories, getting access to his terminal and what over there. 
because the children of Adam have control of that. And that is going to probably mean joining up with the children of Adam and so on. So I'm going to, I'm going to be back at the, uh, drive-in. I'm going to pick one suit of power armor and I'm going to get it beefed up as best I can for withstanding radiation because with the children of Adam there's going to be a lot of radiation in fact that might even be a good place to recharge the TARDIS. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's pretty much going to be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I am out of here. <laughs>